Okay, it's settled. Beauty brings sensuous man to form and spiritual man back to the realm of sense. Many would suppose an intermediate midpoint between form and sense or activity and passivity, where beauty transports us. Schiller thinks this is an impossible conception, for there is an infinite gulf between form and matter, thought and sensation, activity and passivity. There is no intermediate condition. Beauty merely combines the opposing conditions of contemplating and sensing into a single act. The wholly opposite processes reciprocally support each other in the apprehension of the beautiful. Schiller's goal is to combine them so perfectly, perfectly that they give way to a third condition, which I'm supposing is the play impulse. Schiller reasons in the following way as to why so many have failed at his task in the history of aesthetics. The first, philosophers discerning solely by feeling cannot apprehend the individual concept of beauty from the sensuous totality. He says these philosophers are hesitant to invalidate beauty dynamically. I take this to mean that such philosophers think they are restricting the freedom of beauty by applying formality to sensuality. The second, philosophers discerning solely by intellect only see the parts of the conceptual totality and thus know nothing of how the sensuous fits in. Without an account of the sensuous, the concept of beauty is incomplete. These philosophers, Schiller claims, do not want to invalidate beauty logically. I take this to mean that these philosophers don't want experience destroying their theoretical models on beauty. Schiller says both camps miss the truth. To the first group of philosophers, Schiller comforts them by saying, the freedom of beauty you seek to preserve is not lawlessness, but the harmony of laws. To the second group of philosophers, he claims that a definite conception of beauty does not arise from the exclusion of reality, but the inclusion of all realities.